up you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ijama. i am a rising third year family medicine resident and today i want to talk to you guys about getting ready for intern year so this is for all my med students who um, happily matched or hopefully happily um, who matched and are getting ready to start their intern year you may already be like doing orientation or getting ready to start but I'm just going to share my um, tips and like lessons learned I guess from my intern year to kind of um, hopefully set you at ease and um, get you ready so I'm reporting to you from um, my sister's place I'm actually here visiting her um, and her family she has um, two daughters my nieces who I love so much so I'm here babysitting while she and her husband get away. Um, uh, it's always nice to be able to help out families so that they can have their own um, vacations and stuff. So I finally put them both down to sleep and that is why I'm recording this video because I'm gonna be here all weekend and I'm getting back late sat Sunday night and um, I start like, you know, my rotation and stuff next week. I'm not, I may not have time. So um, first and foremost, let me just clarify that I am at an um, opposed, I'm at an opposed family medicine residency um, at, at a like community academic hybrid. So, you know, the main difference between opposed and unopposed is that there are other residents around. So when I do some of my rotations, I am working underneath or working with um, other departments. So. Uh, as opposed to it all being all family medicine residents. Um, so that that makes a difference in my experience versus what you might experience in your program if it is um, unopposed and it's just family medicine residents there. The most important thing to keep in mind or to know for intern year is that you are gonna be doing a lot of, at least again, I'm in an unopposed program. I mean, I'm at an opposed program, but you're gonna be doing a lot of what we call off-service rotations. And basically what that means is you are rotating with a different service. So um, during my intern year, I had emergency medicine, OBGYN, internal medicine, like wards, pediatrics, inpatient, um, newborn nursery, and um, ICU. And then I had like a, then I, we had two, to, two months that were in the department. So out of 12 months of intern year, two of them, in my program at least, were in family medicine and all the rest of them were away. So that um, has its pros and its cons. You know, it's difficult when you're not with your family um, and you are constantly rotating with other services and you can see how, you know, other programs are kind of do more stuff within themselves and they may know each other better versus you and your intern class just kind of like doing a potpourri of stuff all over the place and so one of the important things about you when you're an intern is making sure that your class gets together um, you may not be the social one but figure out who the social one is and just make sure you guys are are planning events it's hard not everyone's always going to be able to come but at least, you know, like once a month or something, get together. Hopefully your program does like some sort of didactic sessions where you guys can come together if those are back in person, hopefully soon. But um, that is key because it's gonna be tough as a family medicine resident if you're at a program where you rotate with a lot of off-service residents your intern year to feel connected to your group. You know, the good thing about that is that you get to meet residents in all other residency programs. So, you know, I have friends who are like in the PEDS program or like internal medicine, you know, cause I work with them, I rotate with them. When I see them around the hospital, uh, I know them. So pros and cons, cause for example, like, I don't know if you're, if you're like OBGYN, you wouldn't know like internal medicine. You wouldn't work that close with internal medicine. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, but like sometimes there's specialties where you do so much within your department that you don't get to know other residents. Um, but as family medicine, we rotate with everybody so everybody knows us um, and it's helpful because you need to do consults or um, later when you're getting old when you're later in your residency and you need to like manage labor and you need to work with the OB residents you know those people you know you know so it does help for like inter for like interdepartment collegiality 
I don't know the word, but um, but with it, but as a resident, you may feel a little disconnected. So keep that in mind and just try to keep your class as close knit as possible with like social limits. The other big thing, again, that comes with doing a lot of uh, like a pulpery of rotations during your intern year is that like every month is going to be different. So every month is going to require a transition. Um, you're going to be going from emergency department to internal medicine or family medicine inpatient service, or you're going to be going from pediatrics to OBGYN. So you're going to kind of feel like a med student again, not going to lie, um, with all of like the shifting around. And um, it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's just that we have to get so much more broad experience. Hopefully, um, there is some sort of guide that you should make sure you have access to that um, has maybe goes through each of the rotations and the need to know stuff. Like where do you need to be the first day? What are the typical hours? Um, what are the, like, the general expectations? How do you access the patient list? Whatever. Um, try to get your hands on that information. My program, we have like some sort of like an intern survival guide. Maybe you have something similar. If not, maybe think about creating one and um, use that to kind of help guide you. You'll get to the point where you're like, things happen so fast that you're just like, I will cross that bridge when I get there. There's no way you're gonna be able to plan so far in advance, but at least the last week of your rotation, figure out or talk to your fellow classmates who have gone through something before and figure out what you need to know, what you need to do. Um, Cause that will help you with your confidence and stuff when you show up. Cause remember you may be working with other residents who are very familiar with that service cause they rotate on it a lot. Like if you're going on pediatrics, they you rotate on pediatrics once or twice, they rotate on the inpatient service like five times, you know, something like that. So you want to do your due diligence in knowing what's up. Another um, lesson learned, this is more of a lesson learned because it's not something that you think about right now, but you think about it after the fact, is that because you are shifting rotations a lot month to month, sometimes your schedule can get, there could be lapses. Like you might be work assigned to work overnight or something, the last night of your rotation. And then the first day of your next rotation, they have you working in the morning. Those little things can happen because the like uh, pediatric service may be making your schedule over here, whereas the emergency medicine chiefs are making your schedule for the month before. So you have to really take it upon yourself to watch your schedule, what's happening the last day and the first day, and make sure that that's not overlapping because I've been burned by that where um, like I probably like should have had a day off or I end up breaking duty hours because like technically I work maybe six days straight of the last rotation and that goes straight into work on the next rotation and and it goes for like 10 days or something and I end up never having a break um, and unfortunately sometimes if you don't catch it it's hard for them to make the adjustment later so little pearl that I picked up along the way just pay attention to your schedule part of, a big part of family medicine is clinic so your intern year uh, will always will consist of clinic no matter what um, rotation you're on you at least in my program we have one half day of clinic a week pretty much no matter what um, there may be a structure where you have like a clinics month and so you may not have as much clinic sprayed throughout your year but um, if it's like my schedule you have clinic one half day a week and that can happen even when you're on it's like even when you're on inpatient uh, like other rotations so that's a tough thing to get used to because our program is very inpatient heavy intern year and you're you get so good at hospital stuff you get so good at um working the inpatient life that you know your little one half day a week that you go outpatient it's like this switch has to go off in your brain to figure out like okay like how does this work again so um give yourself grace for that and um just lean on your upper levels if you need help if you're having trouble being efficient just give yourself grace because it gets a lot better when you're a second year i went fully through my intern year and i did not feel comfortable in clinic by the end i think i was even more worried about clinic because my numbers were going up you know each semester or whatever they would increase the amount of patients you're seeing per half day but i'm like you guys are adding more load and i'm not getting any better because i'm 
I'm, all my time is spent in the hospital. So that was a little frustrating and a little scary for me um, as an intern, but it definitely got better as a second year when I started doing a lot more clinic. So if that happens to you and you feel like that, just give yourself grace. Uh, you will get better with time. I think that's, so I think that's, that's all that's coming to me that is family medicine specific. But, okay, but here's like just general internet advice, okay? Number one, you need to use all of your vacation days. Point blank, period, no excuse. You must use all of your vacation days. You need to know what, what months are vacation eligible, what months are not eligible. You need to map them out before you even start, which means right now, and you need to plan out your vacation days. You don't need to have a trip planned. You don't need to have anything planned. You don't need to be thinking about what your friends are doing unless you guys like already set something up together. You just need to take the freaking vacation days and then figure out what you're gonna do later. So, Cause if you wait for like other people or trips, you might miss the deadline cause you just have to request three months in advance. At least that's how it is in my program. And you might miss your opportunity to use your vacation days. Use all of your vacation days. If you miss a vacation day, I would be very mad at you. <laughs> you deserve them, you work hard for them, you get paid for them. You're basically leaving money on the table if you don't take your vacation days. And then next to vacation days, you also have sick days. Now, sick days as a resident is a controversial topic because, you know, we all like get sick and still go to work. And, you know, it's part of the culture and that might be a heavy culture at your program where it's hard and you feel really bad to take sick days because somebody else has to come and cover for you. And that may be very frowned upon. So uh, that's something that you kind of have to feel out yourself, but I want you to be aware that you do have sick days. You need to know, you need to figure out how many you have. Um, and sickness is not just physical sickness, it's mental as well. So if you are just hitting the wall with burnout um, or just mental exhaustion, you can take a sick day, you know, just talk to your program, it might depend on what rotation you're on, but that counts too. And it's not like vacation that you requested in advance. It's like, okay, I cannot come to work tomorrow, you know, and it's a sick day. So you do have those at your disposal and you should use them if you need to. That obviously doesn't count for like feeling tired, unfortunately, or being sleep deprived because literally we all are. So that one's a little bit tougher for people to like be okay with, <laughs> but take a sick day if you need it. Um, overall, you know, intern year is tough but fair. It's, it's a lot of learning. Um, I'm sure it was bad 10 years ago, now that, that like they've kind of made hours and stuff better. It's not the worst thing ever. You can still live your life. You can still go on vacations. You can still have a family. You can still get a dog. You can still um, go see your parents if they're out of state. You can still do a lot of stuff. You can still live your life. Like it's just a job. It's, it's your job it, during that time. And some months are harder than others, but do not use residency as an excuse to not live your, the life that you want to live. You know, like it's, completely possible you can start a new relationship and get engaged <laughs> hello during residency and um people get married people start families people start businesses people have side hustles people um run marathons you know it's intern year is not going to stop you from doing anything that you want to do outside of medicine you do not need to let the thought of like being an intern or starting residency like overwhelm you especially as a family medicine resident. That might be different. <laughs> that might be different if you're like an OBGYN resident or a surgery resident, but especially as a family medicine resident, if you don't live your life, like there's no excuse. Um, and also, you know, just you're just, as, just like you were as a medical student where people just want to teach you stuff and you're a sponge, you're kind of the same as an intern. Like, don't go crazy, I guess I should say. Like, I don't, like you do need to study, you do need to um, take initiative, you do need to um, like know your patients, uh, of course, top to bottom. But in the beginning, there's a lot of grace that's given to you and you need to take advantage of that. So don't be so hard on yourself. Um, but as time goes on, you will get feedback from your attendings or your upper levels and you will improve. You're not expected to start already at 100% because otherwise what's the point of residency, right? So. The expectation is that you come in at a low level, 
we all came in on a low level and you grow and grow and grow and grow. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to like come in hot, you know? Like just take it easy. You do not need to be doing any extra work. Just, you know, again, family medicine resident, okay? I don't, the totally different aspects in other residencies where maybe you do, like if you're gonna be a surgeon, maybe you should suture and stuff over, you know, you need to get certain things together before you start a residency. But um, family medicine resident, just chill. And uh, you will learn as you go. And, and as you get more comfortable, you'll be able to like learn on top of the learning that you do. Um, you will learn in the hospital and then you'll be able to come home and learn more. You'll listen to podcasts, you'll read journal articles, like all that will come with time. You do not need to worry about doing all that right now. I think I will stop there. Um, if you guys have specific questions, you can leave them in the comments and I can answer. This video was kind of like me just spewing at the mouth. Uh, I didn't have anything written down or anything to go off of. Uh, I just kind of wanted to give you what was in my head. But if you have extra questions, just put them in the comments and I'll answer them. I'm really excited for you guys. I'm happy for you guys. Um, it's going to be a crazy wild ride. And next thing you know, you're going to be in my position. We're almost a third year and you're over it. <laughs> you're just ready to work and get paid. Honestly, like I'm just ready to start working and start getting paid. Okay. I mean, I'm not ready, but I'm ready. So next thing you know, you'll be like me. Um, I wish you guys all the best and I will be in touch and see you guys in my next video. Also, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel, share my videos, share my channel with your other um, classmates, future, future co-residents. And guys, um, let me know if this helps you once you're like halfway through entering here. Let me know. <laughs> let me know how you feel. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all.